Hi, I'm Rachel here with my cat Leia, and it's arrived, it's arrived, it's finally arrived. It being the 2017 Sammy Roar Prize finalists. I was supposed to be making a video today reviewing the 2011 Sammy Roar winner and two other books, but I haven't finished them. So, fangirl time. The Sammy Roar Prize was established at the Jewish Book Council in honor of emerging Jewish authors. It alternates annually between awarding fiction and nonfiction, and this year is a fiction year. I don't really have a good reason to make a video about award predictions. I've been watching a lot of great videos lately on BookTube about the Bailey's Prize, like on Eric Anderson's channel or Mercy's Bookish Musings. But they have almost always read the books that they're actually talking about. I am not that current on the front list, like at all. Though I do intend to read at least three of these works after May, when the official winner and choice award will be announced. For now, I thought I'd still talk about them. I'm at least somewhat familiar with most of these books, but I'll highlight the three that are most interesting to me. First is Ways to Disappear by Itra Novi. At first, I was a little surprised to see this here by way of my earlier video about what makes a book Jewish. This book, at least from its description, doesn't have a lot of Jewish content. It's about a quirky Brazilian author who climbs into an almond tree and her American translator who, along with the author's children, have a crazy mystery to solve. It got a fair bit of buzz, and I think I heard about it first through the Jewish Book Council site. But today I read the review of this novel on the Forward's website, and it's definitely more Jewish than I originally thought. But in terms of the question about what makes the list for Sammy Rohr, in general, what I've read of the books uh, seems to imply that it's not uh, the Judaism of the author that's honored as much as the Judaism of the content. And I guess that's the case here too. Man, I saw this book for cheap at my Jewish Community Center's used book sale. Why didn't I grab it? Regrets. Next, I'll talk about The Bed Moved, which are short stories by Rebecca Schiff. This book got considerably less hype from what I've seen in the broader literary community. I'm assuming this has to do with the fact that no one reads short story collections except me. I'm sure there's a few others as well. <laughs> I first heard about this book on the Unorthodox podcast, where Schiff gave a rollicking interview about her modern take on adult female sexuality. The stories also cover what it means to be Jewish, which generally encompasses today's modern Jewish American identity, without so much all of the tradition and religion of the past. I added it to my Goodreads TBR list right afterwards, and now I have more of an excuse to read it. Yay! And I think I also saw this book for cheap at the Jewish Community Center, but I probably would have picked it up because it's on my TBR. This might have been the time when I forced myself to put some books back because my stack was getting too big. Darn it. And finally, we have The Yid by Paul Goldberg. Looking at the page count now, it's shorter than I thought at 350 pages, but it seems to carry a huge Jewish historical significance. I have no idea about where I first heard about it, but it seemed to be everywhere for a bit last year. I'll link the Washington Post review because home paper pride. This is about a ragtag group that sets out to assassinate Stalin in the 1950s, including one minor Yiddish stage actor. Historically, it covers Stalin's attempt at another pogrom against the Jews, which is not the usual set of pogroms that we hear about. The usual pogroms against the Jews happened during Tsarist Russia. Now we're in a different political party, but the same anti-Semitism. This might be a little too darkly satirical for my tastes, but it does seem like a big, important Jewish novel of the year, so I was going to read it anyway. I didn't see it at the Jewish Community Center sale, from what I remember, but it was just about everywhere else. So now, my completely questionable predictions. I think the Yid is going to win. It's Jewish history, but relatively unexplored Jewish history, and it's quirky. Plus, it was a fiction finalist for the National Jewish Book Awards last year, so that works in its favor. But I could also see the Sammy Roar judges awarding Rebecca Schiff's collection. They often do go for short story collections, at least in the past. At the moment, I don't think Ways to Disappear will get the top spot, but I still feel like I'm somewhat underestimating or misinterpreting this book. Or the winner might come from the two works that I haven't mentioned yet. You can see them on my thumbnail because I happen to find them in the library. First, we have Inherited Disorders by Adam Ehrlich Socks, another short story collection, or really vignettes, about fathers and sons, from the time of King David to the modern day. And then there's last year's National Jewish Book Award winner, The Last Flight of Poxel West by Daniel Torday. It's about a Jewish-American teenager in the 80s, 
learning about the history of his war hero and European refugee uncle, Poxel West. Statistically speaking, going through the past Sammy Roar winners, this does seem to give this novel an edge over the Yid, which was just a sucky NJBA finalist, not the winner. Sheesh, haven't these books heard of sharing? That's about it for now. I've left links down below about the Sammy Roar Prize and about these books. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.